Shareholder engagement has become a normal part of the proxy season, but who engages on behalf of the company? Should the members of the board participate? Today on Zippy Point. I'm Brock Romack and I'm a big fan of yous. Shareholder engagement has quickly become a bedrock activity for the proxy season in most companies. And when I say quickly, I mean finally in the last five years it's happened. I never understood why it wasn't for the last hundred. Anyways, um, shareholder engagement now extends beyond the traditional proxy season time frame occasionally. And the question arises, who is actually doing the engagement on the company side? That often depends on what topics a particular institutional investor wants to engage on. Many of the typical engagement topics relate to ESG issues, topics that aren't necessarily in the CEO or CFO's wheelhouse. So a lot of the engagement takes place between investors and members of the corporate secretary's office. When you get down to it, who's on the call will really depend on the particular topic. If it's about sustainability, the engagement will inevitably include those within the company that lead that effort, perhaps with a corporate secretary team member there to facilitate if the corporate secretary's team isn't involved in sustainability as it is. If it's about executive pay, you might have someone from human resources there, their staffer that leads that process, and maybe the head of, of HR, along with a corporate secretary person, again, since the corporate secretary's office is usually in charge of the engagement efforts overall. It's always useful to know the agenda for a shareholder engagement before you have the meeting, the call. It's almost always known in advance. What does the investor want to know? What is the problem that will be discussed? This helps you decide on who should be on the call in addition to helping you get prepared to speak to the specific topics that will be on the agenda. If a director is going to get involved with the engagement, it's even more important to nail down exactly what the topics will be. You don't want your director to be blindsided and earn their well-earned wrath. So here are five things to consider if a director is asked to participate in an engagement. One, directors should be ready. Two, don't read from a script. Three, don't hide behind Reg FD. Four, be wary of engagement beyond ESG. And five, try broader engagement settings. One, directors should be ready. So you always want to have a few directors prepared and ready. It might be your board chair, your lead director, and the heads of the key board committees, audit, compensation, governance. These are the directors who might be specifically requested by investors, depending on what the issue is that triggers the engagement. For example, an investor might insist on hearing from the compensation committee chair to ensure that that you know, there might be a pay issue or that they just want to make sure that the comp committee is actively involved in the pay setting process. That it's, not the, it's not the CEO setting the pay levels or the head of HR or the comp consultant is really running everything. So they want to speak in, to the comp committee chair and ask specific questions about, about why your comp program is designed the way it is or what, if there's a particular problem, you know, what, if you're doing something different from your peers or you waive some target levels <laughs> and paid out a bonus, you know, discretion on a, on a discretionary basis, they might want to ask about that kind of thing. So you typically don't offer up a director first. You don't do that and offer them up if an investor doesn't ask for them. The investor actually might not want to have the director on the phone. They might, you know, they, they're aware that that might change the dynamic of the meeting in a way that the investor doesn't want. Some investors are actually mindful of the director's time and they don't want to waste their time if they're not really necessary this particular engagement. They're more selective about when to ask for a director to be on the line, when there's a real pressing need and when they really want to ensure that there's something that the board should really be aware of and they want directors to hear about the problem directly. And more importantly, they want to hear what the director has to say about the problem. But if a director is requested, they need to be ready so that you're not scrambling. And what do I mean by ready? People often talk about directors who engage should be camera ready, and I never really understood that. It's just, this is not a dog and pony show. This is not television. Yes, the director should sound intelligent, knowledgeable, but hopefully that's the type of people that you have on your board to begin with. Hopefully all your directors are camera ready in that sense. So by ready, I mean that they're aware that they might need to take the time out of their busy schedule to do the prep work, in order to do the actual call, a mock Q&A isn't a bad idea. So not only do they know their own stuff down cold, but they're also aware of what the investors' policies are in this area, uh, maybe also the proxy advisor's policies. And if a particular director just doesn't seem able to get ready for all this, 
don't bring them to the engagement. It's far better to come up with an excuse and offer up another director or someone from management than to bring a director who might ruffle feathers or even worse, seems like they just don't know what they're doing or they don't have time to do the prep. So this can be a tricky thing, particularly if there's a director that might want to speak and it's hard to tell that director, hey, you might not be appropriate for this meeting. And of course, it's particularly directed because your large shareholder has just asked for that specific director for a particular reason. Let's say it's the chair of the comp committee to ensure they know what they're doing. And if you can't produce that comp committee chair, it's going to look suspicious. The investor requested that director because the investor wants that director to explain why a board's policy is in the shareholder's interest or explain what the problem is or hear how the director, how the board intends to fix it. And so <laughs> they want that director to step up to the plate, not send, send in a pinch hitter. So you can try to offer up another member of the comp committee or tell the investor, look, we take care, very careful notes. We try to record everything as verbatim as possible so that we understand your perspectives on this issue. And we're gonna share your words as close as possible with our entire comp committee, including the comp committee chair. And then you hope that works to satisfy the investor, but it probably won't at least not deep in their gut, deep in their heart. <laughs> so by the way, you should be doing this recording thing verbatim with all your engagement efforts anyways. You give the, the committee and the full board the actual notes from all your engagement sessions. You prepare highlights on the key topics, try to gauge how much support you've, you think you've earned from the various directors, how much over the, overlap there is among your investor base on these key topics. And then you give the government the governance committee your raw straight up notes in addition to the polished thing so they can actually feel like they were in the room and part of the conversation so i've heard that directors really like getting this kind of information first in a polished form pretty it up and it helps and then in the raw form too so it, overall this helps inform their decisions particularly if they're struggling on a particular topic uh, like uh, like whether they need to develop a response to a particular shareholder proposal so see my separate big guides about tips for shareholder engagement generally. When I say generally, I mean overall, a link to which is below. Two, don't read from a script. So you want to be prepared. That goes without saying, of course. The point I'm trying to make here is that you want the director to be prepared in a way where you do a prep session, you have a set of bullets, you got your talking points that match the preset agenda. You're, you're prepared for something that comes up that's not on the agenda, but is, you know would it be expected for the director to address because it's in their wheelhouse, but you're not having the director work off a deck or the worst of all scenarios reading from a script. You know, going over a deck is painful enough. Reading from a script makes it look like you're trying to hide something. Three, don't hide behind Reg FD. So another part of being ready is reminding the directors that if they're going to speak, they have to remember the restrictions of Regulation FD so they, they don't get themselves and the company into trouble. So the Corp Fin has a staff interpretation, which clarify that directors are not prohibited from speaking privately with shareholders. So that directors now have the comfort that private meetings are, are not intrinsically problematic. But that doesn't mean they can't forget FD's limitations. So most governance modifications are not considered material and they don't pose FD concerns. So please, please don't hide from a question claiming that, you know, and you, the director says, Reg FD borrows me from talking about that if it's not true. Because it's, and if it's governance related, it's not going to be true in most cases. Investors can see right through that and they absolutely hate it. It defeats the purpose of the call in the first place, which is to answer their questions. But you do have to be careful with FD here so that if you're having a conversation about governance and an investor happens to ask a question about financial performance, perhaps earning targets related to a bonus plan, that's gonna tee up a potential FD problem. So in the comp area, it's typically okay to talk about potential modifications to an incentive plan, but it, you know, make sure you're just not drilling down into the numbers that tip investors off about what a company is seeing around the corner about its actual financial performance. Four, be wary of engagement beyond ESG. So there's been a trend in, in these governance engagements for portfolio managers to show up. <laughs> so it's not just the normal proxy committee folks that traditionally have handled the, this shareholder engagement function with the corporate secretary people. It's now proxy portfolio managers, the ones that actually make the investment decisions, want to sh participate in these meetings too. They find that these meetings can be useful to help to decide whether to upsize or downsize their stake in the company. So they're digging for any kernel informa of information that gives them an advantage over their, their, their investment pro competitors. So this certainly raises the stakes of engagement if you have a portfolio manager and your tenant should go up 
about FD because they're going to be trying to dig into the numbers. So obviously their interest, like I said, is, is lays primarily in the financial returns and your long-term strategic outlook. And that's all increasingly being tied to things like sustainability, human capital management, all these hot governance topics of the day. Um, so all these ESG things are starting to blend together with, with the topics that the portfolio manager traditionally has been interested in. And so this is a tough thing to work through. At what point do we allow our director to speak on more strategic issues? And if so, you know, who should it be? Do the directors even want to? It's one of those things where it takes a fair amount of time to get that director prepared and feel confident. So it's perfectly fine to tell an investor who requests a director be on, uh, you know, address a financial performance issue that, you know, directors are not available for any financial performance questions, not allowed to talk about the strat plan. If you want to talk about those things, you have the CEO and the CFO be more than happy to talk to your portfolio manager about those kinds of things. That's the, one of the primary responsibilities of their jobs, the CEO and the CFO, to true investor relations. So that's not the responsibility of, the, of an outside director. And it's perfectly fine to say this and cut it off, nip it in the bud, whether it happens there in the room or even in advance where they're acting, you know, they're, they're requesting a director and you know it's going to be a bunch of questions about that kind of topic. It's, it's perfectly fine to hide behind FD here. Five, try broader engagement settings. So some companies have their directors meet with investors at more informal settings without the pressure of a specific engagement, without the pressure of a specific problem that's happening at the company. So attending conferences, you know, Council of Institutional Investors, all these, or the other smaller, more behind the scenes types of events where investors will mingle with directors or just having a, a coffee and talking in the hall. That way your directors can get some general feedback about what investors think about the company without being on the spot about a particular issue. And they get to know the investors a little bit more personally. By the way, I have a, several other vid guides, which you can see below about shareholder engagement generally, uh, the disclosure you might need to make in the proxy about shareholder engagement, you know, voluntarily or required, required one being shareholder director communications under item 407F of Regulation SK. Now I'm going to bring on Bob Lamb, partner at Gunster, been in-house at six companies, known him forever. I'm going to take an excerpt of a longer video that he taped for me regarding shareholder director communications under item 407F and the other whistleblowing hotlines. This excerpt relates to using a director during your institutional investor shareholder engagement. Quick Zips by Zippy Point. Quick and dirty. And Bob, what's a good way to handle using directors during engagement with inst institutional investors. So oh, I, flipping the coin here. And I, I could I could write a long book on that one. I mean, <laughs> I, I got to say that the first time that ever happened with me, and this is, I'm going to name names here because it's not a secret. I was working for WR Grace, which at least at that point had had a pretty bad record in terms of environmental compliance. You know, I, the only thing I'll say in defense of the record was that what Grace did was no different from what most companies did at that point. Um, how they handled it may have been another issue. Um, but we started getting shareholder proposals in the 80s from religious orders that were uh, submitting shareholder proposals about what we, what, what we then called ESG stuff. Um, you know, you're, you're polluting, you're doing this. We were in some dirty industries, oil and gas and chemicals. and when I started looking at these proposals, I said, you know, I can't really defend what we did then, but we're doing a lot better now. And we have an opportunity to educate the shareholders to the, you know, the good stuff that we're doing now. Are we perfect? No, but I'd like to reach out to them. And for reasons that I never took the time to uncover, we actually had a committee on corporate responsibility. And I went to the chair of that committee and I said, Jim, you know, you're going to think I'm nuts. Maybe I am nuts. I'd like to reach out to them and talk to them. You have any problem with that? And he said, no. And in fact, no, if it helps, I'll join you. Well, that never became necessary. Um, and it was a great education for me. I, I really didn't know who to talk to because these proposals then as now usually had a bunch of co-proponents and I never knew who was in charge. And I went to Tim Smith, who was then head of the Interfaith Center on corporate responsibility. And I said, you know, help me. I don't know who to talk to here. And he was incredibly helpful. Um, and we talked to them. We didn't always get withdrawals. I, in my, my recollection is that we got very few withdrawals, but most of the time we, we developed some respect. We established a dialogue. 
Um, that's, that's not a direct answer to your question, but I've found that having directors able to speak and willing to speak, depending on the issue, can be a, a, a critical component. Um, you know, obviously when it comes to executive compensation, having somebody from management speak to an investor to me is a non-starter um, for obvious reasons. You don't want to be in the position of having to defend why you make as much as you make. And I've seen very articulate CEOs tie themselves up into knots at shareholder meetings because they insist upon answering questions about their compensation. Um, but it's also important, and I'm not treading any new ground here, to make sure that your, your director or directors who are speaking to investors, number one, are camera ready, or as one British investor told me, say investor ready, because camera ready implies a slickness that we don't really want to see. Make, make sure that they're capable of talking to investors. They understand the dynamic of the process. And also, most, most important, make sure they know their stuff. Uh, I, I won't mention who told me this story, and I, she has sworn to me that it's true. Um, story of an investor group that went to a company and said, you know, we, we have problems with your executive compensation process. Um, we'd like to speak to the chair of the comp committee. So they dance out the chair of the comp committee and at the meeting in, in attendance is the head of executive comp. And the first question the investors throw at the chair is, um, we don't understand why you use this metric for your executive compensation. I forget whether it was bonuses or whatever. And the chair of the compensation committee turns to the head of executive comp and says, that's a great question. Why do we use that metric? And it's like, ah. <laughs> um, it reminds me of Mad Magazine, scenes we'd like to see or like not to see. Um, you know. It's great to be camera ready, but if you don't know your stuff and you make an admission like that, I mean, you know, all I can do is quote Donna Anderson or paraphrase Donna Anderson, who used to say, I don't know whether she still does, that nine out of 10 times she'd meet with a board member and come away with a more dismal outlook about the company than she went than she had going into the meeting. So, you know, make sure you've got the right board member, make sure, you know, that he or she knows what what the subject matter is, you know, train them, um, explain the issues that you think are likely to come up. There are lots of things you can do, create an agenda for the meeting ahead of time. So among other things, the investor knows what subjects you're prepared to discuss. Um, you know, the Boy Scout adage, be prepared, really, really important. Yeah, I agree completely. Thank you so Thank much, you. Bob. My pleasure, always. Thank you, sir.